Should you throw away your USB microphone? Let's talk about it. I am so sorry, buddy. You all right? I'm so sorry. I did not mean to, I'm gonna put you right back over here. Got a little smudge on there. Now, obviously I don't mean to literally throw away your USB microphone. It's still a great piece of audio tech. And so you should keep it around or give it to a friend. But the question is, should you get rid of a USB microphone because of all the new technology that's available for streaming audio? When we first got into streaming, USB microphones were great because we just needed a way to pick up our voice and make it sound good. And then of course have a webcam of some sort to, to show our face. You discovered pretty quickly that as production value went up and competition for streaming went up, you wanted to make things better and better, so we added things like music to the background of our streams. And then Discord came along and we actually were able to use voice comms that sounded good. And we could mute our friends and turn their levels up and down. The problem was, is that the audio control for Discord and Spotify and your YouTube video that you pull up to play for your viewers, all of those things had different audio level controls. And so you had to manually drag that little volume slider up and down on Spotify or in Discord for each of your teammates if they were getting too loud. And so you didn't want to have all of these things to worry about and it took away a little bit from the production quality of your stream. But there was not a lot of good options out there. So in the beginning, I would just take my USB microphone and I would place it right in front of me. Wait a minute, place it? That reminds me, the sponsor of today's video is Placeit.net. Placeit has thousands of mockups and templates for stream overlays, Twitch panels, logos, merch, YouTube end screens, animations, and so much more. Once you find the template you're looking for, you can customize colors, text, and other elements to make the perfect design creation. After that, download it and it's completely yours to use however you want with full commercial license. Instead of spending hundreds of dollars on design work, you can purchase a monthly or yearly subscription to place it and get unlimited downloads. Just use my 15% off discount link in the description below. Since I just happened to remember while we were filming this, massive shout out to place it. You guys check out that link in the description for 15% off. And no, this was not planned and scripted. Okay, maybe it was. Anyway, I would place my USB microphone in front of me and this is what I had, right? And I would just talk into it and I thought, well, this is the way streaming is gonna be. I'm just gonna turn up the volume of my Spotify and turn up my Discord volume or turn it down whenever I need it. It was just a mess, right? So when the GoXLR came along, I then had to fork over hundreds of dollars on the GoXLR just so I could control my Spotify and my Discord audio separately from my game audio and my microphone. So when it was all said and done, I was hundreds of dollars in the hole to upgrade my audio to be able to control a few audio sources when in reality, I didn't give up my Blue Yeti microphone for any other reason than the control issue. I actually really love the Blue Yeti and the way that it sounds. And so I had to trade it in because I just didn't have any functionality or flexibility with it. Well, some of the people that worked on the Go XLR ended up leaving TC Helicon. They ended up getting together and forming a brand new company called Beacon. Now to give you a little background on Beacon, Beacon is based in Canada and some of these former Go XLR employees along with other people that they hired came together with streamers and content creators in mind and decided that they wanted to create the ultimate audio control solution for us. So they started working really hard to figure out how they could develop audio devices that would not only save your USB microphone, but if you don't have a USB microphone, even become the staple USB microphone. So they created three new devices, a USB microphone and two audio controllers. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the audio controllers. And what are these two new audio controllers you may ask? It's the Beacon Mix and the Beacon Mix Create. Now they may look super simple, clean, aesthetically pleasing, not taking up a lot of space on your desk. And if all of those things or any of those things are things you're thinking, you're absolutely right. They've actually nailed these audio devices completely when it comes to um, the way it looks the way it feels, the way it operates, and not taking up a lot of space on your desk. I mean, they literally have mastered it. But we're gonna talk about both of these and why they're important, what each one of these does and how they're different, but also who each one of these devices is for. And I'll tell you right now, these will save your USB microphone and take your streaming to the next level. Now, neither the Beacon Mix or the Beacon Mix Create have any inputs or outputs on the device itself other than a USB type C cable on the back, which goes directly to your computer. Now they also both have the exact same five inch screen at 800 by 480 pixels. 
So you're not getting an upgrade on your screen depending on which one you go with, even though one's a little bit more expensive than the other. It's really more about the feature set and functionality of what each one of these do. Now, the purpose of both of these devices is simply to control all of your audio sources on your computer individually without you having to open up any of the applications or programs and manually adjust the volume. So Spotify, Chrome browser, Discord, your video games, whatever it is, these will control them and give you complete access to either mute them individually or turn them up and down. So let's look at the Beacon Mix first. The Beacon Mix cost $149, which is way cheaper than buying something like a Go XLR, especially if you're just needing control over different individual audio sources on your computer. Now, like I said, no inputs on this thing, so you're not gonna be plugging an XLR microphone into this, but if you have an XLR microphone that's plugged into some type of interface for your computer, then this will control that as well. Now, it really is the simple simplest device that you could possibly imagine. It has, of course, the screen up here. It's got four knobs down here at the bottom, and each one of these knobs will turn left or right, which will control the audio on your computer of whatever device is assigned to that particular knob. And then if you press the knob in, it will mute and then if you press it again, it will unmute that particular track. Now, if you're looking at this saying, that's super simple, that's what I need, let me show you the software so you can get this and set it up and know exactly how it works. So here we are in the Beacon software, and no matter what Beacon product you get, whether it's the Beacon Mix, the Beacon Mix Create, or their USB microphone, which I'll talk about more in a different video, but no matter which one you get, they will show up over here on the left-hand side, and then you'll also see what options you have for each one of them right here in between this and your main interface for controlling the device. Now our Beacon Mix shows up as Beacon Mix 1. You can actually set up multiple profiles for your Beacon Mix if you want to configure multiple different profiles to have different audio sources assigned to each one of your four faders or the knobs on the Beacon Mix. Uh, to add a new profile, all you have to simply do is click this little plus button and it's going to put a new profile here. If you right click on it, you can save the profile, rename the profile, delete the profile, or duplicate the profile. We've already got a profile set up, so we're going to go ahead and delete this one. and. And whichever profile we're using, if we have made changes to it, a little red button will show up to the left-hand side, which shows you that the changes have not been saved. So you simply have to come over here and click this little save button in order to save whatever changes you've made since the last time that you messed with this profile. This will be the same for the Beacon Mix, the Beacon Mix Create, and if you get the Beacon Mic in the future, that as well. So when you come over here, click on whichever profile you want to use, and then click on the Beacon Mix from this category right over here. Here. We're going to be operating in the Beacon Mix, so we're going to drop that down. And once we click on the settings and we come over here, we'll notice that we have four different faders that are attached to the four different knobs on the Beacon Mix. And those faders basically control the volume level of whatever's assigned to each one of them. Now at the top here, you can actually right click and change whatever color you want to be underneath the name. You can also double click on the name and rename it to whatever you want. Now I've already renamed each of these faders already except for knob four over here. So I'm gonna just left click twice and rename knob four headphones. And now I have a track that I can actually put the volume of my headphones on and turn my headphones up and down independently of my USB microphone. Now, each one of these little symbols represents your headphones and your PC's audio for each one of the audio devices that you're using. So if you click on one of these little buttons, it's going to mute the audio that's assigned to this particular fader. Or if you press the knob on the Beacon Mix under that category, it will also mute any one of these tracks that you'd like as long as you're pressing in the knob for that desired fader. Now, before I show you how to drag different audio sources up to each one of these faders, I want to show you this little bar right here, which is your listening input and output devices. Um, if you click on this little drop down, it's going to show you all of the listening devices that are plugged into your computer currently. In our case, we're going to select the speakers Yeti Classic, which is the headphone jack on the bottom of our blue Yeti. And then you also have a second drop down that you can click on to select a secondary output source for your audio. So for instance, if you had a pair of computer speakers plugged into your computer, you would go to your speakers. Realtek Audio is what my output is on my computer. So I'd select that. And now I actually have the ability to switch between two different outputs on my computer. I could be listening on my headphones, and then if I want to take my headphones off after a stream or something like that and listen through my computer speakers, I can simply switch to my computer speakers without having to unplug and replug my headphones or my speakers. Now, what's really cool is in order to get this to switch back and forth, you can manually do it in the application, or if you hold down one of the knobs on the Beacon Mix itself, for one second, it will switch between the two different sources. As you can see, I'm holding down 
the first knob, this one right here on my Beacon Mix. And as I do that, it's switching between the two different listening devices, which is a very cool feature and means you don't have to do anything to switch from your headphones to your speakers other than press that knob in. Now, when it comes to actually getting the different audio sources up to these faders, you'll notice that at the very bottom, they've got all of our audio sources that our computer currently has plugged into it or recognizes. Now, your computer sometimes will not recognize an audio device unless it's making sound. So for instance, my applications over here, Spotify, Spotify doesn't show up, but if I was to open Spotify and start playing something from it, it would show up on this list. But we've got recording devices, playback devices, applications, and other sources. And this will show you everything available in each one of these categories. So for instance, if we wanted to bring our USB microphone into track one right here, then I would just look for that Blue Yeti microphone right here, drag it up, drop it underneath the, the track one or the fader one, and now I can control my Blue Yeti's microphone with that first fader and I can turn that knob up and down or I can even press it in and mute it and it's controlling my microphone. Now what's really cool about this is that it doesn't matter what microphone or interface you have plugged in. If it's a recording device, it will show up here and you can use it with the Beacon Mix. Now you'll notice I also have a browser fader and under applications, I have my Chrome browser. So I can simply drag this up under browser and drop it right there. And now I can control the volume level of only my Chrome browser. So if I'm watching a YouTube video, instead of sliding that little volume bar up and down, depending on how loud it is, I I can just open the YouTube video and then turn it up or down with my Beacon Mix. Another thing that's really cool is that if you'll notice under other sources, it says personal listening device. So if I drag this up under the headphones fader that we made earlier, now this actually is what this is right here. This is connected to this. So if I turn that up and down, I'm actually controlling the volume of my headphones from the Beacon Mix rather than having to mess with my Blue Yeti's volume or my USB microphone's volume. So you can set your microphone however you want, and then you can control the sound right here. And if you want to mute your headphones, you simply just press them in and it will mute the sound of your headphones altogether. Or if you're using your speakers, same thing applies with your computer speakers. So this is the Beacon Mix. It's super simple, super easy, and it makes your USB microphone a viable streaming option because now you can control all of these other things without having to buy a bunch of new equipment. Now the question may arise, who is this device really for? And I'll tell you very simply, this is for anybody using a single PC setup that wants control over all of their audio on the fly. Also, like I mentioned earlier, this makes USB microphones a viable option for streaming even though they don't have a lot of flexibility as far as control over your audio. Even if you're not a live streamer or a content creator at all, this is something that's super awesome for productivity. So if you're using a PC and you just wanna be able to control audio without having to open up a bunch of applications, then you can use this, control your audio on the fly and continue to work on whatever it is you're working on. This basically becomes your computer's audio mixing interface on your desktop in a package that makes it super easy and simple. So it's literally something that everybody can find a good use for. But what if you're a live streamer and you need more control than the Beacon Mix can provide? What if you want your stream's audio level to be different than what you're actually listening to in your headphones? What if you're a streamer and you have two PCs set up instead of just one and you still need to be able to control audio from both? Well, that is where the Beacon Mix Create comes in. So here's the Beacon Mix Create and it comes in at $199. This device has all the same functions as the Beacon Mix with some added features. You'll notice that the Beacon Mix Create not only has the same four knobs that the Beacon Mix has, but it also has these additional buttons underneath each knob. And on the Beacon Mix Create, these are actually dedicated mute buttons. So when you press it, it will mute that track and it'll also turn red. The button itself will turn red when you press it. And then when you uh, press it again, it'll come back to whatever color you have set. Now on this other side, you'll notice that there are these two half circle buttons and these actually allow you to scroll through different audio faders. So you're not just limited to four, but you can actually have more than four and you can just scroll through until you find what you're needing and then control the audio. And every time you switch pages, these four knobs right here will become the controls for that new page of audio faders. And then underneath that, you've got this little button right here, which when you press it, switches you between your mix and your audience's mix, which is a sub mix feature. And we'll talk about that here in the app in just a minute, but it allows you to have two different mixes of audio so that you can send a different sound out to your stream than what you're hearing in your headphones. So let's jump into the software and take a look at some of the differences between the mix and the mix create. So here we are in the Beacon Mix Creates software, and there are a few noticeable differences 
differences between this and the Beacon Mixes software. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is that these titles up here at the top of each one of these faders are not customizable. So you can't really adjust those. There's no way to customize whether it says mic or music or system, but you can drag these around. So if you want aux to be between chat and system, then you can drag it over and just reorganize it however you would like. Both the Beacon Mix and the Mix Create do have customizable colors, so that's a cool feature. That is the same, but underneath that, you will now notice that instead of having one slider or one fader like the Beacon Mix does, you now have two. And this is your mix and your audience's mix or sub mix on your Beacon Mix Create. This allows you to adjust the volume for let's say the music in your headphones. You can adjust it to a level that you like. And then let's say that your stream says, hey, the music's too quiet. Well, then you can unlink these two faders. I can go over here and I can turn the music up for just my audience without messing up my own volume. So if I want to hear footsteps in Warzone or something like that, I can have a lower volume than what they hear. And then when you relock it, as these go up and down, if you turn these up and down, they're going to stay that same exact ratio apart until you get right down here and see they get closer together as you get lower in volume so that they both turn off at the same time. But when you go back up to these higher levels, you'll have the same difference ratioed as you did when you first set this up. So another thing that you'll notice is that we have this big plus button over here, and this is so you can add multiple different fader tracks. We've already got five set up, but if we hit this plus, you can see that I can add four more different types of faders to my lineup, giving me a grand total of eight potential faders that we can have set up at any one given time. Now you may be looking at this saying, well, there's actually nine different options here, but it's really eight faders at one time because aux one, two, and hardware all share the same audio source input. So once you select two of these, the third one will be grayed out. Once you have all the tracks set up that you need up here, then you can go down here and even select what type of mute whenever you mute the track will actually happen. So if you want to mute to all that will mute to your ears and to your audience mix. If you do mute to audience, it will only mute what the audience hears, but you can still hear everything in your ears. And then you can mute to self, which is just your personal mix or mute to chat, which is uh, goes out to the actual chat mix. Now underneath this, you'll notice we still have the same personal mix option that we did on the beacon mix and it operates the same way. You've got two different options. You can go down and select your, uh, let's say your Yeti microphone and then your speaker line out and you can switch between computer speakers and headphones with just pressing and holding one of those knobs for one second or you can do it by clicking. And then over here, you'll notice a brand new feature called the audience mix. And this is where you would select where you want the mix or the sub mix of your Beacon Mix Create to go to. So if you're streaming out to OBS, then you would go down here and you would select your computer's Hey guys, Editing Eagle here, and I just wanted to correct something in this video. If you have a single PC setup, you need to leave it on Audience Mix. And when you go into OBS, you will select Audience Mix as your mic auxiliary input for OBS. If you have a dual PC setup, then you will use the Audience Mix dropdown and select your line out that goes to your streaming PC. So make sure that if you're using a single PC, you use the audience mix and don't change this option. Okay, back to the video. If you are using a two PC setup, then you would select your computer speakers audio output. And the reason why is because when you set this up with a two PC setup, then your audio out in the back of your computer will go into the audio in of your streaming computer. And I will mention that I would probably set this up on your gaming computer since that's where most of what happens on stream takes place. It'll be easier to control all your audio that way. So now you can see that we have our volume for our headphones going out to our Blue Yeti. We've got our system volume as our second our second output, and then we're sending our audience mix through our line out to our streaming PC. And real quick, if you wanna know how to set up two PCs, basically you'll use the audio output and input jacks on your motherboard's IO panel for the communication between the two computers. So you'll notice that on this panel over here, we've got our gaming PC, and on this panel over here, we have our streaming PC. And the audio line out on the gaming PC right here will run to the audio line in on the streaming PC. PC, and then we'll take the audio line out on the streaming PC and run it to the audio line in on the gaming PC. This will let both computers hear each other and allow you to hear not only your game computer and all the things happening that you're working with, but also hear the alerts from your streaming PC. The only other thing you're going to have to do after that is open up your computer sound settings 
which is this little tab right here and you can find it underneath my face in the little right down here the little speaker is where you'll find this you click on sound settings you open this up and you want to go to playback device and if you're on your streaming pc then you want to make sure that you set your line out as your main audio so you go find your speakers and right click and set it as your default device and default communications device that's going to send all the audio from your streaming pc back to your gaming pc so that you can not only hear your alerts but control that audio on one of the faders within the beacon mix create now you may be asking yourself well, wait a minute i don't know how to add sources underneath each one of these faders and you can see i've got a couple over here already added my microphone shows up automatically and if i want to select my microphone I just click this little box right over here it will turn blue and that's the microphone that I'm controlling but how do I add for instance my chat volume or my Spotify volume or anything like that well at that point I'm gonna go over here and click this little settings button in the top right hand corner and that's gonna open up my computer's sound devices that are currently active now in this case Spotify doesn't show up but if I was to open Spotify and play music for just a second Spotify is going to show up underneath there and then I can assign this to whatever fader I want within the Beacon app. So in this case, I would click on it and I would assign it to Music to Beacon Mix Create. And when I close this down, you'll notice that right over here, I now have Spotify under my music section within my Beacon Mix Create software. Oh, it just went away. That's because there's no audio coming from Spotify. If I play the audio from Spotify again, then it actually shows up here. So one of the things that you wanna note is that the audio devices here will not show up unless they're actually in use, but you do wanna utilize this little settings bar to set the audio output so that whenever you do use Spotify or any other program, it will show back up to wherever you assigned it. So go through here and set up each one of these tracks and you'll have all of the audio control that you need. The other thing that's unique to the Beacon Mix Create is this routing table down here at the bottom. And this allows you to see everything that's going into your personal mix, everything that's going to your audience mix, and everything that's going to your voice chat mic, all within one simple quick glance look. So I can determine, for instance, if I don't want my music going to my headphones, I could mute the music here, or I could just go over here and turn it off all together and this is going to mute the music under my personal mix without messing with anything else I have going on and so you can mute it one of two ways but this gives you a quick glance and you if you know you're not going to use music in your headphones at all you might as well just turn it off here so that you never accidentally unmute it up here and this goes for your audience mix as well if you don't want your audience to hear music you can click this and it's going to turn the, the music to your audience off and I can even turn it back on in my ears but they're never going to hear that output so the routing table is also a really cool feature it makes it a lot easier to see what you're set up with audio wise and who's hearing what one last thing that I want to mention for the beacon mix create which is a really really cool feature is this little lock up here at the top let's say that you always want to be able to control your microphone and your music even if you scroll to some of these other sources but when you page scroll over usually these would disappear and it would go to the next four sources well if you press this little lock button right here it's gonna lock these two faders to always be on the left Left hand side of your beacon mix create even if you page scroll over to the next set of faders so to show you what this looks like if I hold up my beacon mix create right here and I press this page fader over you'll notice that only the two faders on the right hand side are going to switch but the two on the left stay the same And that allows me to keep my microphone and my music available at all times so that I don't have to worry about scrolling back and forth just to control my two primary audio sources. And we already talked about who the Beacon Mix is for, but who is the Beacon Mix Create really for? First of all, it's definitely for streamers that have a two PC setup. This allows you to listen to your alerts, but also listen to everything happening on your gaming PC at the same time. This is absolutely for people who need sub mixes. Like we mentioned, if you want to listen to DMCA music in your headphones, but you don't want your audience to hear them and get those pesky DMCA strikes against your account, you want to get the Beacon Mix Create because it allows you to have the sub mixes so you can control all the audio separately for your audience versus your headphones. It also is just a great all around device for people who want more control over all of their audio. It gives you the flexibility you need, even if you have a single PC setup, to future proof when you add a second PC if you're looking to do that. And even without that, if you like the idea of submixes, it's just a good idea to go ahead and get them if you need them. And lastly, if you like the routing table and how easy it is to make sure that all the audio you want is going to the right places, 
this is the way to go. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you all and has given you a little bit more of a peace of mind that you don't need to get rid of your USB microphone, especially if you love it so much, just because it has no functionality for audio control over your different sources. Now it makes this microphone or any other USB microphone a very viable choice for streaming. But I also wanna mention that if you don't have a USB microphone or you just wanna upgrade your USB microphone, Beacon also has the Beacon mic, which is the best USB microphone on the market today. So if you wanna see more about the Beacon mic, click the video right up here to learn more about what it is, what it does, and why it is the best USB microphone ever made. So make sure you check out Beacon, you guys. This video is not sponsored by them. They didn't pay me to say any of this stuff. They simply sent me the products and said, do a review and let us know what you think. And I love the products. I think they're fantastic. But with that being said, make sure if you like this video to smack that thumbs up button for me and get it out to as many people as possible. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to know when videos like this go live. As always, you can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Eagle Garrett. I would love to hang out with you over there. If you got any questions, leave them in the comments or come by my stream and ask in the chat. I'm always happy to talk about any of these videos that I make. You can also join us on Discord at discord.gg slash flock if you'd like to become a part of the community over there and join myself and many other gamers and content creators. Lastly, you can find me on all the social medias, Twitter being my most used. So check that out at Eagle Garrett on everything. But with that being said, as always, rock on, peace out, God bless. I'll see you in the next video. And last but not least, kick off. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Is Dragon getting in on this? Uh, we, we have some people that are uh, that are definitely like, you know, we got some spectators. <laughs> look, look, two are going up while two are going down. They're alternating. We're alternating, guys. Look how professional we are. <laughs> oh my gosh.